Hey, I'm Ken Knapsack, author of the book Why We Love Star Wars, host of the Knapsack Files podcast, Force Center podcast, The Afternoons with Josh and Ken, Casterly Talk, and, well, quite frankly, too many podcasts. But I'm here to talk about comedy. What comedy means to me it means a lot. It's, it's, it means a lot of serious things, which is weird because it's comedy. But that's what makes comedy so interesting. Comedy is a serious business. I got into comedy because there is absolutely a power in making people laugh and a joy and a drug. I didn't know it was that. I just know I had this really interesting, unexplainable feeling as a young kid when I made people laugh. And I remember loving to laugh myself. I remember seeing some comedy specials and seeing Steve Martin and Steve Martin movies early on and watching Saturday Night Live early on and staying up and watching stand-up comedy on, I think it was Channel 11 or Fox had like a comic strip live uh, hosted by Gary Kroger at one point and my dad would watch it and I had a kind of a strict house, a strict upbringing and wasn't allowed to watch a lot of things but my dad let me watch that and sometimes there'd be some comics and some racy stuff that we'd, you know, sit there either really uncomfortable or we'd, or we'd turn it off but it just kind of was in my, my blood early on. And that feeling, going back to that feeling of making people laugh, uh, it was powerful because I was a very shy kid. And when you're shy and you're not comfortable being yourself, but you can kind of put on a facade and put on an act and people laugh at that. Those feelings of uh, self-esteem, the low self-esteem, um, insecurity that start to go away. And that's the drug that hits later on in life. But back, back as a kid, I didn't know it. And I just, the feeling of laughter and getting laughter it was pretty awesome, pretty powerful. Um, I loved, I loved uh, when Kermit the Frog would do his news segments on Sesame Street when he was like a reporter. It's like my favorite Sesame Street segment. So I have a lot of, because of that, I think, I have a lot of news-based comedy. And I grew up, you know, wanting to be a weekend update anchor on Saturday Night Live. Grew up loving Dennis Miller, um, Kevin Nealon, Norm MacDonald, a lot of the people on the update desk, Chevy Chase back in the day. So I want to do that. So a lot of that, when I got into radio, I would do a lot of uh, the regular sports and music news, but I would deliver it in a humorous way. The joke's always me. The joke always needs to be me. And that is a fine line because that can get dangerous. But I, I really think that's also not safe in a bad way, but I, I like kind of turning turning the microscope on myself because really i'm just a human living on this planet trying to figure it out like everyone else and i think that's where people can connect with my comedy that, you know that's big that's that's the real thing that's intimacy that's real intimacy plus my mom she was a nurse she said that's the My style of comedy, it's wide-ranging, subtle humor, snarky humor, uh, like I said, reference-based comedy, but it always comes back to the crazy existence that this earth is and just trying to put myself out there as, I'm trying to figure this out too, let's figure it out together. I don't mind with in-jokes or sketches or short films or, or you know, stand-up comedy performances, having a couple references that are pop culture based, my era, definitely of my time. I've, I've, I've become like that old guy making references to the mid 90s rock scene because that's where I came from. I try to, I know who a Cardi B is, but I'm not going to make a joke about it because it's not authentic coming from me, but that's my era. Um, 
I'm okay putting something in there. If I can get someone to laugh at a Gin Blossoms joke or Toad the Wet Sprocket reference, and that's one or two people, that's worth it. So about 2013, well, 2012, I get asked by my friends Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis to become the producer of their podcast, The Schmoes No Movie Show. And that opened up the digital media world to me, and that set me on a path uh, to produce their show weekly, appear on it as a, kind of a character and, and do the movie news. And, and, and that led me to working at Screen Junkies as a producer and an occasional host. Hello, Screen Junkies, and welcome to Watching Thrones. For the final time this season, we are here live on Screen Junkies Plus right now to break down episode 10, the season finale of season six of Game of Thrones. I think comedy can still change the world. I think you can still provide valuable insights. I, I don't set out to change the world with my comedy. I go out to kind of share my story. But if your story has to do with big themes and big political issues, and it's true to what you are and who, who you are and, and as a comic and, and, and what story you want to tell, I think you should do it. But there should be some kind of room to comment on things on stage, to comment on things you normally wouldn't comment on or make jokes about outside of a comedy club. I still think we need to allow that, but I think comedy, comedy is still very powerful. It's a healer, it's, it's a connector. We all kind of be, we're all kind of put into the, you know, when you go to a comedy club, we're all just humans on this rock spinning through space trying to figure it out. And that's what's so great about comedy right now. And there's no right way to connect. You know, there's no one way to do it. We all got to find our way. You just got to really be aware of what you're trying to do from that stage, from that pulpit. Comedy. Comedy can still be the great healer. A 10-year-old girl stood up and said, how can I be strong like Princess Leia? And Carrie Fisher said, start with daddy issues. And it was hilarious, <laughs> and it was fun, it was sweet, but it was real. You've seen the Blues Brothers, and your parents are Blues Brothers. I shot it here, and I remember that, um, can you open this? Yes. <laughs>